this, this work in this beautiful place. Um, uh, my collaborators have been uh, with Josephs and uh, various Josephs and Junkies uh, with graffiti, four planar structures in which uh, uh, there are aluminum contacts on top of uh, uh, a graphite sheet. And <coughs> what else? Is it better? No. What else? So, um, well, uh, it's uh, 10 years by now that uh, uh, Joseph's and Junkies with graphene are being built, and uh, the uh, uh, most of the effort in the is in the realization of ballistic devices. This implies that uh, usually what uh, people do is to exfoliate graphene uh, and to uh, transfer it on a substrate uh, that is uh, silicon oxide usually uh, to get uh, ballistic behavior uh, what uh, uh, has to be done is to isolate the uh, graphene so that uh, uh, most most of the time it is uh, suspended it is suspended on top of the substrate and uh, or it is encapsulated uh, by uh, hexagonal uh, uh, boron nitride and then aluminum contacts are uh, uh, deposited uh, after hatching at the edges. Um, the, uh, uh, the way we do is uh, to uh, uh, not to exfoliate uh, graphene but to uh, grow it on top of silicon carbide via chemical vapor deposition. And uh, uh, this is the advantage that uh, um, you can have large areas of this material um, up to one centimeter square, for instance, a uniform uh, sheet of single layer graphene where you can put many, many junctions uh, on top. Uh, the drawback is that uh, silicon carbide um, uh, has uh, um, often defects and uh, uh, puddles and things like that, so that at the moment uh, um, uh, mobility of graphene is uh, relatively low and uh, um, the motion, the transport of electrons is, uh, is uh, um, diffusive, uh, not ballistic, but diffusive. Still, uh, we hope to, 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 to improve the sample and first of all to put some, some uh, gate on top. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, this uh, way of uh, uh, growing graphene with chemical vapor deposition is being do done also in Cambridge, but uh, again, the graphene is after transferred on top of some uh, silicon oxide. So, um, uh, this is work done uh, uh, by many collaborators. Uh, um, uh, graphene is prepared in Valbon and then it is characterized in Montpellier and uh, uh, contacts have been put in uh, uh, Chalmers and uh, um, the uh, device has, has been measured in Naples. Uh, the people that uh, mostly contributed to this is Benoit Jouveau uh, and uh, also uh, Davide Massarotti in Naples. So. Uh, I will skip the outline and uh, I will tell you about magnetic fingerprints which are really very, very special. Uh, first, let me s tell you something about the characterization of this graphene. Uh, there is practically a D peak which is absent which tells you that there are few defects. Uh, the integrated area of the D peak is uh, something like 3.5% which uh, tells that uh, uh, it's uh, practically a graphene monolayer that we are dealing with. Uh, mobility is low as I was telling you and uh, um, um, the area uh, in our sample is uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 1000 micrometers squared. Uh, so what uh, what you see by ARPAS is that this graphene is P-doped. Uh, the reason is because if you 
uh, follow this uh, uh, gay vector line here in, uh, in the spectrum. Then you see the band and that is the pivot point up here so that uh, uh, you have some key doping in the sample. And uh, uh, then by uh, electrogenitography, you can uh, build many, many junctions on top of this single layer in graphene. And uh, uh, they are um, uh, 300 nanometers long or 200 nanometers long or uh, up to 600. Uh, however, 600 nanometers long do not conduct uh, processing current. And uh, um, they are uh, four micrometer wide usually. And then graphene extends uh, uh, further, uh, uh, further down uh, under the aluminum contact. So uh, the characteristic is uh, 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 strongly nonlinear when you have uh, uh, short length. Um, it starts to be uh, rather uh, rather flat, uh, rather slow, ohmic like uh, when you go up to 600 nanometers. And uh, the junction, as you see, are overdamped. Uh, this tells you that uh, it's not so easy to read out uh, what uh, the critical current is. But uh, uh, the way we do is to, to fit the characteristic by the RSJ model. And uh, the parameter that comes out uh, is uh, what we claim is the critical current of the junction. And uh, uh, as I was saying, it's, rather, uh, it's uh, diffusive. And uh, um, for aluminum, the, the uh, coherence length is 300 nanometers, which tells you that uh, roughly it's the same length as the uh, uh, length of the junction, so that uh, we are in a crossover between uh, short and long junctions. Uh, and this can also be seen uh, when uh, one deals with uh, the uh, ICRN uh, uh, over delta ratio which turns out to be a little, um, at least an order of magnitude less uh, than uh, what is expected. But uh, this appears to be a feature that is uh, common to uh, most of these uh, graphene uh, uh, so same junctions. And uh, it's probably due to the fact that uh, the barrier is not so good between graphene and the contact, so to say. So. Um, However, the uh, uh, critical current density is uh, exactly in the order of uh, in the order of the ones that is found uh, also in other uh, junctions. So, um, when you when you put magnetic field orthogonal to the surface, uh, the first thing that uh, happens is uh, a sh very sharp um, uh, drop of the critical current in the uh, in the and if you increase the field, uh, the, the critical current uh, stays uh, at the same value, which is uh, practically unmeasurable. What is special is that uh, as soon as you turn uh, the sweeping backward, uh, you have a revival of the critical current, uh, although with uh, uh, many fluctuations. And uh, this is even more striking if uh, you do it on a much smaller scale. Uh, that is uh, like this, uh, you have uh, uh, as if you had two state system with uh, uh, critical current practically zero here and uh, critical current maximum here. So um, uh, one has to understand what this kind of inverted hysteresis, inverted with respect to the magnetic hysteresis uh, uh, is, wh wh what is going on here. And uh, uh, I insist that uh, the drop is very, very fast. It's something like 0.5 Gauss, the, the feet where uh, you lose the critical current when you apply a magnetic field. So um, uh, this can be seen uh, from the characteristics. And this is a movie that shows you that uh, you get this, uh, uh, you get this uh, hysteresis. Of course, the hysteresis is symmetric in the sense that uh, 
And uh, what we plot here is resistance better than the critical current because uh, um, uh, they are uh, somehow complementary. And uh, if you go to a, a smaller, much smaller scale, what uh, you find is that uh, the uh, uh, growth of the resistance or uh, the reduction of the critical current is uh, uh, somehow parabolic-like and then uh, uh, the resistance stays stays uh, constant uh, and uh, the parabola has its minimum at the state which is uh, uh, displaced with respect to h uh, equal to zero so um, uh, what one would also uh, explain why uh, uh, there is such a sharp uh, uh, uprise of the resistance and the drop of the critical current uh, in this situation. The black, uh, the black part was the first cooling. This black here was the first cooling. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we had the hysteresis afterwards. So uh, uh, um, the first thing one thinks of is phase diffusion. But phase diffusion is unable to give you uh, hysteresis. If you try to plot the two branches uh, 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 with uh, a phase diffusion model that is uh, related to FK, then uh, you find that the parameters you should use uh, are very, very different, and uh, this uh, does not allow you to, to, to uh, claim for phase diffusion. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, you can uh, pick up a Fraunhofer pattern out of the... Uh, out of the um, uh, just by matching the two uh, parts where the critical current is uh, finite. And uh, what one sees is that uh, there are two frequencies, so to say, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, one uh, very uh, fast and the other one uh, uh, relatively low. And, uh, and you can uh, uh, find out what the effective area that is interested in this uh, Fraunhofer pattern uh, is. And uh, uh, you understand that uh, because uh, um, aluminum is very thin on top of graphene, uh, 8 nanometers, then uh, there is a, a, a big penetration of the field inside. So that uh, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, you have a penetration length that is roughly one micrometer and uh, you can uh, solve the Rondon equation and find that uh, the area uh, can be uh, well fitted uh, with uh, what we would find with the Rondon equation and uh, uh, there are uh, for the fast oscillation, fast oscillation here and uh, on the contrary for the, for the uh, envelope uh, uh, the fit works uh, if you assume that there is some focusing of the current uh, at the boundaries of the graphene, which is a feature that is not really unusual uh, even in conventional Joseph's injunctions. So uh, this is uh, uh, again the, the hysteresis and uh, um, uh, we went to the literature and uh, 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 Tinker many times, uh, many uh, long ago uh, dealt with uh, granular superconductors, uh, granular aluminum uh, with great boundary between them and uh, uh, with uh, uh, vortex spinning and de-dimming and uh, they found something, they calculated and found also experimental something that uh, uh, somehow looks uh, similar to what we are looking in the sense that uh, the, the hysteresis is well uh, described when you have uh, dynamics of vortices. So uh, what uh, one uh, uh, can imagine is that uh, a critical state model applies in which uh, you have a Meissner uh, current that is practically constant with magnetic field. Uh, this would be one of the contacts and uh, uh, here you have a, a, a magnetization inside. So when you uh, change the sweeping of the magnetic field, uh, immediately uh, the uh, Meissner uh, current uh, 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 changes direction. 
and this implies that uh, uh, vortices that can leak in from the inside of aluminum are uh, uh, pushed out of uh, uh, the contact and they can uh, flow away and this would be uh, the reason why only thin vortices remain uh, and this would tell you that uh, uh, you gain the critical current again. So uh, there are two forces uh, uh, that balance themselves. Uh, one, one is the Meissner uh, force that pushes the water inside. Another one is uh, the uh, Inert force that pushes uh, the vortex outside. And of course, uh, when you invert the magnetic field, uh, uh, both of them are in the same direction. So. Uh, this could explain why you have the revival of the, uh, of the critical current. Uh, um, uh, the critical current becomes uh, uh, the highest possible at the field that is positive with respect to the zero. And again, in the critical state model, uh, what one finds is that uh, uh, there is demagnetization at the boundaries so that uh, uh, you have a negative magnetic field that is spinned uh, at the boundaries of the contacts uh, so that uh, you need a positive field to, to, uh, to compensate it. And this would uh, explain why you have the minimum here. So um, uh, uh, actually, um, uh, to, to, to check this possibility, we have done a classical simulation. We have taken uh, disks and uh, we have put uh, a strong, uh, a long-range interaction between the disks and uh, short-range interaction between the disks. And uh, 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 we have been uh, claiming by analogy that uh, a low density of disks means low magnetic field, and high density of disks means uh, 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 high uh, uh, magnetic field. Uh, this used to be a, a, a movie, but I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, I can show you after if you like. Uh, uh, what, uh, what the outcome is, is that uh, uh, the outcome of the simulation is, is that if you uh, look at the uh, diffusion coefficient of these disks, uh, when uh, the density is very low, so the magnetic field is very low, uh, this gives a viscosity that is one of range, while on the contrary, uh, for uh, a higher density, the short range force uh, dominates and uh, you get a viscosity that is proportional to the density or to A. So when you plug these two inside the flux flow resistance formula uh, of Tintum, you find that uh, indeed the resistance grows uh, uh, almost parabolically and uh, 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 for low densities uh, of vortices, of free vortices, and uh, it uh, uh, is uh, practically constant for higher uh, density of vortices. So uh, what uh, one can imagine is that uh, when density of vortices is low, then uh, you have strong correlation between them due to the long range uh, uh, force, and uh, they, um, uh, when you, when you a, a current, uh, they start, uh, the texture starts sliding across uh, the uh, device, and so uh, what you have is uh, a drastic uh, reduction of the uh, critical current because uh, resistance uh, uh, grows, and it grows, as I was telling you, uh, within uh, something like uh, five, uh, um, half a gauss, so to say. So, uh, uh, the, the, uh, now the crucial question, why, why are there these vortices, uh, uh, these dynamics of vortices uh, inside this system, which is on top of silicon carbide that is an insulator, and uh, you have these contacts? Well, uh, to have vortices there, you have to, to, to assume that uh, some kind of uh, condensation energy is uh, taking over, and because the vortex requires uh, balance between uh, the loss of condensation energy, of superconducting condensation energy, and uh, uh, gain uh, due to the work of Meissner uh, currents uh, that are screening the, the, this loss. So uh, 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 we thought that uh, because we had just uh, a very thin uh, 
a flake of uh, graphene and very large flake of graphene. We thought that uh, some, some kind of uh, uh, fossil rich and talus transition was going to take over. Unfortunately, uh, our measurements were uh, down to uh, 280 mmK only, uh, while we uh, estimate a, a, a loss of the talus temperature that is of the order of 50 mmK, but uh, in the next run we hope to, to, to measure at these temperatures and to check whether indeed uh, there is uh, a, a transition of graphene to to superconducting state uh, via a fossil centralis transition. So what one does is to uh, fit uh, the resistance versus temperature. So you first have a drop that is uh, the aluminum that becomes superconducting at 1K, and then you have this behavior the here that is uh, easily recognizable as uh, paraconductivity, as lamas of Larkin regime and uh, you can uh, plot appropriately the resistance uh, versus temperature and find uh, uh, what is called the mean field temperature, uh, which would be the mean field temperature at which uh, the graphene could become superconducting uh, in case there were no fluctuations, but of course it's not the transition temperature in this case. And then there is another region where concavity is different, and this could be uh, well fitted by, by uh, fossil lithium and Taurus. Uh, but uh, uh, we were stri uh, 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 striking for us was the fact that we didn't need to, to uh, make two different fits. It was enough to, to uh, take the uh, crossover formula by um, uh, Halperin and Nelson and uh, uh, use this, uh, uh, this uh, mean field temperature as a parameter that comes into play and use uh, um, an extra parameter D that is very important in all this uh, business. Leave just the number that they put, uh, and this number is needed uh, to, to uh, uh, continue the, the crossover to the Azlamas of Larkin regime. And then uh, we have, uh, uh, for, for few of uh, those uh, junctions, uh, we have a, a, a good overall uh, uh, fitting of the R versus T uh, dependence. So uh, we think that uh, uh, this would be a, a hint to the solution, in particular the fact that uh, this D parameter is uh, rather high. Uh, this is not found, for instance, in, uh, in uh, 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 granular uh, uh, aluminum, granular superconductors. Uh, it's uh, D uh, turns out to be uh, at least uh, two order of magnitude less, and this makes the, um, the uh, vicinity between uh, the uh, uh, mean field temperature and the cross of the temperature, uh, cl they, they become closer so that uh, so that uh, the cost of the uh, transition cannot be really uh, uh, recognized, uh, while on the contrary, a large value for D was found in uh, indium, indium oxide uh, 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 films, and uh, uh, a large value, uh, this large value uh, tells you that uh, you are practically monitoring, uh, if it's true, monitoring something like a 2D XY model that is uh, uh, making its uh, 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 textbook transition. So, um, so uh, I hope uh, that uh, further measurement on other samples that we're preparing uh, uh, will uh, confirm this, uh, this uh, uh, possibilities uh, that uh, have already appeared on uh, physical field. Thank you very much. Um, 